Let's see, we got sound here? I guess we have sound. Oh, yeah. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hold it. Oh, do some more if you have to do some more. Go on. How are you, what do you redo? Dave will be able to tell it's real stuff. You can see the ripples in the side of the bowl. Again? Whatever, yeah. Make Dave happy. Right, Dave? <laughs> Everybody say, hi, Dave. Hi, hi Dave. Dave. Say, we are real people. <laughs> we're real people. So we don't get what we're saying. Dip it in the water again. Well, it's up to Dave to say. Look pretty. Want the table out of the way? Yeah. You want to me my bucket of water? Okay, good. When I'm done here, I'm going to have that, have me, someone make me that. Nice little fire going here now. Actually, the object is to get the whole oven inside to burn out white. And we got a good hot fire going. Oh, I didn't know that. She was pregnant, right? Oh, neat. Can I have you there? I think I'm going to do that. Timmy, you can go for it. I want to do that. Oh, they're so cool. Today we're going to talk a little bit about folk music. Folk music is uh, any kind of music, really that uh, you don't learn in a formal setting. It's not classical music. Most of the time it's not written down like violin or piano music. Uh, it's usually the kinds of songs and music Tim L. B. flying underneath the neck here. You might want to kind of bat him away there. Um, it's the kind of music that, that people share in small groups. Um, a lot of people think of the old ballads, the old songs that are passed on from father to son. Uh, but it includes modern things like Great Big Gobs of Greasy Guy and you go for guts. I mean, you know that song. Um, you know, you would never you would never find that written down probably in a book or, or in sheet music that somebody could uh, could practice. I brought a number of instruments to show and demonstrate to you. Of course a hundred years ago when the settlers came over, there wasn't any TV, there wasn't any radio, and I don't really know what they did to get along. Hard life, no boom boxes, um, but they did a lot of things. They told stories, and they provided a lot of their own music. Um, so I have some different instruments I'd like to show you today. 
Uh, some of them are appropriate to our German setting, some of them are not so appropriate. Uh, this first one is called the banjo, it's a five string banjo. Uh, nobody's sure exactly what its origin really is. Um, <coughs> they think that uh, a variant of the banjo probably came over from Africa with the slaves. Tom Jefferson's journal talks about his slaves playing something called the banjar, and there's some speculation. It might have been like the turtle shell with face shows. And uh, the style of banjo playing I'm going to demonstrate for you is a, a Southern Appalachian uh, banjo style called, uh, called Old Joe Clark. South Dakota for a number of years. Uh, we are not too many people familiar with them. Again, they're more from the Appalachian Mountain area. Uh, uh, nobody's sure how they were invented either, really. Um, because there really isn't any other instrument like it in the whole world. A guitar or a banjo uh, has a long neck with, with frets, a fingerboard like this, but then the sound box is down at one end. didn't bring my guitar with me today, but uh, the banjo, you remember, had that big drum on the end. Uh, the dulcimer is a member of the zither family, and uh, what makes it a zither is the fact that this fingerboard runs from one end to the other end of the sound box. You know, like with a guitar, the neck sticks way out on the end, as I said before. Um, the dulcimer is, is a great instrument to learn to play. It's uh, kind of like picking the melody out with one finger on a piano. It's, it's got a melody string. Mm -hmm. And it's got what's called two drone strings. This uh, second string and third string are drone strings, and they just kind of drone along and play the accompaniment. Sounds a little bit like a bagpipe. Some people think maybe the idea came from Scotland. Um, it's it's got uh, a number of relatives in Europe, but again, they're not they're none of them quite the same. In, uh, in German, there's one called a uh, a Scheitholt. Uh, in Norway, there's one. Balsamer was invented. Um, again, uh, let me just play a, a scale for you. Uh, you could hear I was just pressing down on the first two strings. Some of them have doubled the first string to kick a little more volume out on the melody. Um, one of the other interesting things about it, too, is if you've ever looked at a guitar uh, fingerboard or a banjo fingerboard, you'll notice that uh, up at the top of the, the the, the neck, um, the frets start out being real wide, but they're evenly spaced all the way along, and they get narrower and narrower. On the dulcimer, uh, it has just a diatonic scale, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do scale, and that is reflected on the fingerboard. You have two wide ones and then a short space, two wider spaces and a short space, and again, they get smaller and smaller as you go up the scale, and the notes get higher and higher. Um, but, but that kind of makes it easy to play, too, because uh, you don't have all the sharps and flats, and consequently you don't have to watch out for those, and so you make fewer mistakes. So really, it's, it's an interesting instrument. Um, I thought I'd play a tune called Boil Them Cabbage Down for you on the dulcimer.
There's a possum in a cement tree and a raccoon on the ground. Possum says, you son of a gun, throw some of them simmons down. Boil them cabbage down, boys, turn them hoe cakes round. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. Boil them cabbage down, turn them hoe cakes round. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. Well, I took my wife to the blacksmith shop to have her mouth made small. She turned around a time or two and she swallowed shopping. And I can sing and boil them cabbage down. <laughs> so that's the mountain dulcimer. Pull up. Portable instruments, at any rate. Uh, the harmonica, which you probably all recognize. And the jaw harp, which you may or may not recognize. Um, I guess I'll demonstrate the jaw harp first. Uh, oh, the watermelon song. That's the one I play on the jaw harp. Um, they've been around for a long, long time. They, they go back a ways, uh, at least to the 1600s and, and maybe beyond that. Um, they're just kind of good fun. Let's see, the watermelon song. Watermelon vine upon my grave with juice through. Plant a watermelon grave vine upon my grave with juice through. Oh, the parson has a chicken and he thinks it's mighty fine, but to me there's nothing sweeter than a watermelon vine. Plant a watermelon vine upon my grave with juice through. <laughs> So that's just silly. You uh, you have to have a hollow head to play them, I guess. It's it's kind of like whistling. You shape your mouth the same way like you do inside. You know we don't really think about that when we're whistling, uh, but you shape your mouth a little bit like when you're whistling, and that kind of changes you know the sound. That if, this is the uh, this is the harmonica, and if you've ever tried a harmonica, <clears throat> you know that it too has a diatonic scale. In other words, it's got the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And chances are, if you've tried to play the harmonica, you also know that there's some notes missing. And that's because it is a diatonic instrument, not a chromatic instrument. Um, and that can be good or bad, depending on if you want to play that note or not. Um, you also know, probably, or may know or may not know, that uh, you get one note if you blow in, and you get one note if you draw out. And there's a little reed, a set of reeds in here, like a big pipe organ, uh, and they vibrate in, in the air. And that's how the uh, harmonica works. The harmonica was invented by a gentleman named Frederick Bushman in the late 1880s. So they might have had a harmonica here at the log house. Um, and he was originally from German, Germany, a good name like Frederick Bushman, you'd expect that he was. He invented a number of other instruments and I can't remember if it was Berlin or Bonn or just what part of Germany he resided in, but he, he made a lot of instruments. And to this day, the best harmonicas are German harmonicas, Honer being the, uh, the largest manufacturer, best known manufacturer. Anyhow, we're going to play a tune called Turkey in a Straw. Um, and on the chorus, I'm going to sing Turkey in a Straw, and you guys all have to sing Ha Ha Ha. Should we try that? Turkey in a Straw. Ha Ha Ha. Not bad. Sometimes I'm going to sing Turkey in the Snow, and I want you to sing Ho, Ho, Ho. Turkey in the Snow, Ho, Ho, Ho. Well, I think Santa Claus laughs louder than that. But uh, uh, then I'm going to sing Bullfrog danced with his mother-in-law, and he whistled up a tune called the Turkey in the Straw. Sometimes I might sing Turkey in the Bar, and you guys are going to sing. Har, har, har. Let's see if you guys could uh, 
Put your hands together. Can help me get the rhythm going. I'd appreciate that. Very good. On a hot summer's day, see the little fishes at their play with their hands in their pockets, pockets in their pants. Did you ever see the fish do the hoochie coochie dance? Turkey in a straw, ha ha ha, turkey in a hay, hey hey hey. Bullfrog, he danced with his mother in law, whistled up a tune called the turkey in the straw, turkey in the tree, hee hee hee, turkey in the bar, har har har. Oh, the bullfrog danced with his mother in law, whistles up a tune called the turkey in the straw. Here. In fact, uh, there's records that when the, the first 15 came over, they sailed on a steamship called the Caroline, and they found somebody that had one of these little German uh, accordions, and they used it to uh, have their prayer meetings with, and they'd sing the hymns uh, accompanied by the accordion, which is kind of a, a rowdy-sounding idea to me, but not a bad one. Um, and uh, this thing is called the Hand Harmonica. Can anybody translate that out of German for me? A hand harmonica. What do you think it means? Hand a hand harmonica. They put a couple different stops on. There's a high voice and a medium voice and a great big deep voice that I don't use very often. Instead of uh, supplying the air out of these lungs, thing sounds like Darth Vader. <laughs> There's where the air comes from. And then on this side, we got a couple of bass spoons that go. So we have an instant accompaniment. Here's an old German drinking song. All
You like that, Dave? to me. Like Jenny, oh. <laughs> have you done this before? I have. Yeah. Okay. Did I do it yeah, right? Yeah, should I go? You know, don't you? Yeah. Two, See, three, you twist them once. How long enough. Well, then I kind of stretch it after it's put together. Go on, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is it, is is it, it too thick? No, no, Jeff, get in. Did I do it wrong? And then you can come back and do some more. You no, twist it one you time, then you do like this, and you can always stretch it a little bit. So. Just make it look like a pretzel. Like a there, see? That was yeah. oh, you just twist it. I think you stretched it out a little too long, That's Sally. <laughs> yeah. You haven't got room here. No, what do I do? Watch out for the That's camera. That's good. Oh, no, no, no. Here. I tried to get it out. I had it here. And then just didn't mess up. That's good. It's good. I like that. Thank you, Sue. That's good. This one looks better than the last. There, so I twist. Okay, how do I do it? Okay, oh. <laughs> what? There you go. And then you twist it. Here you go, guys. I'm stuck. Y'all got me. Smile, Paige. <laughs> That's probably enough. You want to take that out? Oh, sprinkle some salt. Oh, hey, you some funny looking pretzels over here. <laughs> Off the boat. <laughs> Off and back, back and forth. A lot of work. Just to make, make sure that doesn't land on the pretzels. <laughs>
Now they used to make all the bread once a week for the whole week. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to have to do this every day. Getting started. As soon as all our pretzels are out here, we got to put them all in at the same time. Because right now, what you do is you lose your heat. You only want to open that oven door once or twice. So, what we're doing now is first of all, our baking's being done. When the oven temperature is around 500 degrees. Probably not going to take that well, that's why I wanted all the so that it cools my oven down. I was planning. My plans aren't working. No one's listening to me. It's going to be too hot to bake these. I don't have to double clean. Well, I need some water for the sausages. Nance? Somebody go inside and tell Nancy that we need water for the sausages to steam them. I see my eyes close up the back here. I'll get a knife. I'll get a knife. Stay here. I'd be your friend if you already said you want to Pretzels won't take long.
hear him whistle? Yeah. Huh? I'm yeah. scary. Do you hear it whistle? Hey, everybody, listen. You hear our sausages making noises? Hear whistling? They're done. They're <laughs> That's what we can hear my dad. Did you hear it? Yeah, a little bit. Well, then I... Were you there? Next time you see Jeremy, call him Rockwell. Are you going to stand out and go over here? Yeah, I think so. Please serve me. Outside, so um, you can butter your burger outside and get your sausage outside. No, that's good. Are we supposed to go through the back door then? Yeah, go up and get the other one. Oh, I see it. It's that page advertisement. Yeah. Thing. yeah I see that car wax. And, uh, oh, man. This is for yeah. you, Keith. Thank you. One of these cornbreads you mix. Who's is that? Oh, that is. That's for I don't like it. <laughs> Everybody gets a sample and get it all. I can't cut it anymore. Oh, I don't like it. Go on. Have a sausage. Grab a sausage. Have some bread and it's real churned, it's real churned uh, butter. Butter because it's different. Hello, Nancy. 